The visits are designed to address two challenges faced by students. The first challenge is that students find it really hard to engage with physics as a subject. The second challenge is they find it really hard to associate with physics careers. So these visits are actually designed to engage them with physics. What we're seeing here is a human hair under the Keynes microscope. And then they get to meet fantastic guys like Lloyd and Mike, who actually are physicists who are really normal, so they can start to associate themselves with careers that are available to them. What can you see on the screen? Flashing red arrows. No, no, but if that's sat like now, sat now. Yeah. Now come look at the other side of the screen. So come up from this angle. Oh my gosh! Yeah? Okay. Film. The Institute of Physics with Stimulating Physics have worked with Aim Higher to actually select the schools in partnership. So some of the schools that we're working with, the, the children there will not have a family history of graduate careers. So what we're trying to do is to actually work with schools, work with businesses, to actually show children what their choices really are. And in 1992 we produced the ViewCam, which I've still got uh, one of the relics. <laughs> Uh, that, that was the that was the view cam. It was the best product um, in its days, and as a result of that product, because it was a very popular product, we we were even the sponsors of uh, Manchester United. For a country to develop, you need scientific advances, be it in medicine or in electronics. So you need a constant flow of scientists, a constant flow of engineers, and this is the reason why these visits, I think, are very very important because we need to encourage the young people to take up these careers. Do you have people who decide, like, who come up with the ideas to make the new things or...? It's one of our roles as scientists to come up with the, with the technology. And then there are people who would say this thing will never make money or it will make money. So those are the people that have the final say. So I have a passion for, for science and, and I would want more people to, to get involved. So I thought by, having, by getting involved and showing the students what they can do with their degrees, uh, that was my little contribution. What we're seeing here is a human hair under the Keynes microscope. The kids are usually impressed when we do such demonstrations. Uh, it's quite nice to be able to see the relative size of a, of a transistor compared to a human hair. Students sometimes do come with misconceptions. They imagine to walk around a laboratory like this and see the stereotypical boffin-type scientist. <laughs> Fairly old people in white coats. It's more advanced than what I expected. There's more technology. I thought it wouldn't be as advanced as that. I didn't think we were that good. Like the GPS, I saw that was quite good. Some of the stuff was what I expected, like the lab coats and stuff, but lots of the stuff was like new and different, like all the equipment and stuff, I was like, lots of money going into it. I believe that science is exciting, and I believe it's life-changing, but I know that most of the children who come through that door, come through the door actually disagreeing with me, but I know a lot of them go back out through the door agreeing with me, so that's the best bit for me. And they've got to see some really expensive machinery, they've seen people dressed up in green suits, they've seen things that the cameras aren't allowed to see, they've seen technology that no one's going to see for five years, and actually they've also got to see what they could be doing themselves in the future. It's not bad for a morning's work. That was hands-on, you got to see a lot, it just makes it more interesting and makes you want to do more. So if there was more trips like this in the future, it'd be quite good because it just gets you more enthusiastic about physics.